Hello, happy Monday. Do you hear that sound? Can you hear that sound? I don't know. Can you hear it? It's the pump. It's working. Oh my gosh. It's finally, finally working. I've been waiting for this for two weeks now. So the technician came in just recently and he fixed it in like literally like 10 minutes. I'm like, oh my God, this is so miraculous. I am about to prepare all of the samples from my PK study and do a calibration curve so that I can see the results from our pharmacokinetic study last week. <gasps> oh, featuring the lovely, uh, what are these things called? Compressed gas file thingy my bobbers behind me. Yes, very excited, very nervous. Trying to pump myself up to get more energy to start all of these because it's gonna be a lot of pipetting. Oh yeah, quick update. I checked the mice this morning and none of the mice have developed like significant tumors yet so we're not ready for injection. So that's why in the meantime I have time to analyze the result from this other pharmacokinetic study. I don't even know if you're keeping track of like which animal study I'm doing. But now, right now, as of right now, I am preparing to check the results of the pharmacokinetic study which is the drug concentration plasma test thing about bother. Okay, okay, let's just get to it. Let's just, I, I'm procrastinating at this point. These are all of my calibration curves. I have three, four, four calibration curves on ice with about 15 minutes left on the clock. And meanwhile, I am letting my mouse plasma samples defrost. These are all of the labeled Eppendorf tubes. This is gonna take longer than I thought. Good morning, happy Tuesday. Let's go check my sample. I think they are ready, but I have to go down to the basement to check on my mice. So the plan today is right now to go down, check on the mice, and then come back up and do all of those samples prepare them all for the UPLC so I'll check back in with you when I come back up from the basement oh my gosh hello it's just been so hectic we did inject our first 10 mice with the drug and I'm gonna be continuing to monitor them and inject them as the tumors grow and then I did prepare all of my samples from yesterday from the pharmacokinetic study all of these samples that were originally in here I prepared them and put them in ethanol on and put them into the UPLC vials and now they are in here so all of those are my samples and we have 10 hours left on the clock <laughs> oh my god hi happy Wednesday it is the end of the day and I didn't vlog at all today I was just checking out my mice preparing for injections measuring the volume and here we are I don't know I just feel pretty deflated today tomorrow is July 1st Tomorrow is Canada Day and I will be here tomorrow. So I will see you tomorrow. <laughs> it's such a pointless little clip, but I want to document and share, I guess, that today my mood is just eh and everything was just eh. And possibly that's because I know that everyone else gets tomorrow off, but I'll be in here with my mice. Maybe that's why. Eh. Hopefully you'll feel better tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Good morning, happy Thursday, happy Canada Day. <laughs> so everyone is off work today because obviously it's Canada Day. But we are here today, we are thriving, we are checking on our mice. It's gonna be great, it's gonna be fine. <laughs> hype myself up, trying to hype myself up. The plan is to bring down the syringes and then go check on my mice. Look, I wanted to rerun these samples yesterday. The UPLC did not work. This thing is making a weird sound. This ELS detector, it was really weird yesterday. I'm hoping that after we do the injections, I still have energy to go do with that to run my samples. And also I think the calibration curve that I made for the drug wasn't good. I don't know what happened. It was just not linear at all. So I want to make that calibration curve as well. That's the plan. I have energy right now, but I did do a long run this morning. I did 22 kilometers. 
kilometers so I hope that'll be good but we'll, we'll just do our best I'll see you when I see you hello hello it is almost 2 p.m. we just finished our injections I'm just going to prepare that calibration curve that I was talking about I'm gonna try to do this while I talk because <laughs> I wanted to like just chat it's so funny like I was just reflecting about the differences in my mindset from when I was in first year of grad school till now so one of the biggest thing that changed is my attitude towards working on the weekends before I transitioned from the masters to the PhD program there was a senior PhD student who used to be in the lab and now he's graduated and stuff I always saw him coming in on the weekends and like he was working so hard and I was like I told my boss like I'm gonna transfer to a PhD but I'm telling you, I'm not going to work as hard as him. Like, I'm going to have my weekends. And now I'm here, entering my fifth year, and I just feel so silly having told him that. Like, having been so freaking adamant about that and so confident that I'm going to never work weekends, no matter what, da 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 And that just makes me laugh so hard just thinking about it. It's kind of sad, really. Of course, if I was able to not work on the weekends, I wouldn't be here. But the nature of animal studies and such, it's just, I got no choice. I have to be here. <laughs> Then another thing is, I remember so clearly the very first day I came into lab and the boss introduced me to everybody and stuff and then on the way like from his office to the lab we were just talking and he was like yeah like how do you feel about doing animal studies da, da, da. and I'm like yeah like I'll, I'll learn, I'll learn. <laughs> I regret that so much. I should have told him I'm terrified of mice. I should have told him anything. Like I'm allergic to mice, like anything to get me out of this. And now here I am working with mice. 75 mice this time, people. 75 mice. My whole life is evolving around these mice. So I'm just labeling my Eppendorf tubes while I'm waiting for the drug to reach room temperature because it was in the negative 20 degrees. I think the drug should be at room temperature now. Let's go weigh that out and then we can do our calibration curve. <laughs> Another thing that I think my mindset has totally changed about on that has that I've totally another thing that my mindset has totally changed towards or on oh my gosh English 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 it's kind of negative but not really at the beginning of my PhD journey I had so much hope it's not to say that I'm hopeless now but I think I'm just more realistic of like how things work and how slow it is to actually make a change don't get me wrong i really like my research and stuff but i think at the beginning i was more like gung-ho about it like oh like it's so awesome it's gonna change the world da -da 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 -da. sorry go put this on the sonicator be right back while well, that's sonicating i go into what i wanted to say yeah, I think I've just become more realistic, or at least now I have a better understanding of how research and academia actually works. I feel like I've lost that naive, na naivety. Like I'm not as naive anymore with regards to like how much impact my research will actually have. Like sure, it's really cool, but I think ultimately my PhD isn't directly going to make someone's life better or have like a profound impact on on any single person it might introduce like a little tidbit of like new stuff that might help someone else with their research which will help someone else and then the change just goes on and on and on and like maybe if you think about it like yes there is some influence like I do have some influence with my work in the field but on the grand scheme of things it's gonna be very 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 small the point of a PhD isn't to change the world, it's to gather all of the knowledge and like the techniques and the skills and like the way of thinking really. So I feel like I've learned that throughout my years. Now that I'm like one of the more senior ones in the whole faculty, it's just really interesting to see like new grad students coming in with a pep in their step. <laughs> 
<laughs> Not to say that grad school will wear you down. There's just less of a pep in your step usually once grad school is through with you, I think. <laughs> At least for me anyways. And I'll share one more thing that I recently realized that kind of blew my mind, but like no duh and like no duh. It came from a conversation with someone that's so far removed from this field. It just occurred to me that not everyone likes or cares about science. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Because like I'm all wrapped up in this world of academia and people my age are moving on with like the next steps in their lives. Like they're getting engaged, having kids, getting married, buying houses, buying apartments and stuff. And I'm here getting excited about like a straight line on a calibration curve. I'm still broke as heck and I'm working like so 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 much and I'm just like stressed out all the time and I'm just so absorbed in my own world I don't even realize that like the general population generally doesn't understand what academia even is they don't understand like the structures that make up academia they don't understand why we're doing what we're doing I don't want to like generalize but I'm just thinking from like my parents perspectives or from my friends perspectives that have no science background or no interest in, in science they just see research as research and like the things that I get excited about like they couldn't care less about it and that's fine I don't know how what I'm trying to say it's just mind-boggling to me because I like it so much and this is my world there are so many other worlds out there and that makes me feel really small, but at the same time, really grateful to have found something that I'm this passionate about, even though it's like a tiny little bit <laughs> of the world. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Let's go check on the sample. It's all dissolved now. Can you see that? Can you see that? <laughs> oh my God, focus. Yes, nice solution. Okay, now this is one milligram per mil. I need to make 180 micrograms. C1V1 is equal to C2V2. Let's go. This is so embarrassing. I actually still have to write it out. I've used this equation so many times and I still can't get it. C2, C1. No, I don't think I want to do that. Let's make one milliliter of this. Why not? Why not? Yeah, let's do one milliliter. Here we go again. Oh my god, this is so embarrassing. I think it's actually because you're watching that I can't do math, okay? Like, every time someone's watching me do math, I just can't do it. So, <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, people, I got it. I'm going to take 180 microliters of this and add 820 microliters of ethanol. And then we get 180 micrograms per, per milliliter. So I'm just adding 180 microliters of ethanol and then I'm going to take 20 microliters from the previous high concentration and dilute it down. And then we have a calibration curve. Now I'm just going to take 40 microliters of this lasma. Oh yeah. And we're going to add this to each these Eppendorf tubes and then now I'm just gonna take where's my pipette? Where's my pipette? Where's my pipette? Oh, oh, five microliters of the calibration curves I made in ethanol oh my goodness and add that to plasma like so Okay, now that's all done. I'm gonna add 300 microliters of ethanol to the plasma mixture to precipitate out all the proteins and then start the whole lyophilization process. Okay. Just 300 microliters of ethanol. I show you, I show you. So you see how it all like precipitated and stuff all the proteins and plasma proteins are just coming out so now i'm gonna leave this on ice for 30 minutes and then we will collect the supernatant after centrifuging and then 
put it on dry ice to freeze it and then into the lipolyzer. 30 minutes. Fry half an hour is done. Put this over here. Spin it down. Done for the day. I put the samples on the lipolyzer. Good day. Productive day. Still have energy. See you tomorrow. Bye. Good morning. Happy Friday. Today I'm very tired. <laughs> As per usual, I feel like after a long run the next day I'm always so tired. But today is very exciting because No Jude is finally back. Oh my gosh, it's been so long. Literally like it's been two months, right? Yeah, two freaking months. And I'm just like <sighs> I survived, I survived two months without no Jude, but barely. So I came into the building super early. So I'm like, oh, I really want to see her. Um, and I got super excited and stuff, but she's not in yet. But I have to go down and check on my mice. So by the time I come back up, she should be here. I'm so excited. Oh, let me look at my samples. Okay, these look good too. Just one. One little vial. Today, oh my gosh, I'm gonna check out my mice, plot the tumor volumes really quick and see how they're progressing because then I have to plan my dosing based off of that. There's a chance, well obviously I'm gonna be in this weekend anyways, but there's a chance that I'll have to make new particles tomorrow so that I can inject the next dose if we need a next dose. And the fun thing is that the boss is on vacation, so he's been not responding to my emails. I sent him an email asking about <laughs> the dosing but he didn't reply so ah, we'll see we will see we will see so that's gonna be the plan just check on my mice plot the tumors plan my weekend if i have to be in here to do extra experiments and then run those samples for that calibration clip that i made yesterday on the uplc anyways i'm gonna go downstairs and hopefully the next clip is gonna be of no jet. oh my goodness okay you go find her 